welcome to Sculpture Studios. You join us for another project with AKQA for the Cairns Future Lions event 2018. Previous projects for this occasion include their Lion Cub character and chess pieces, and their Lion Mountain. Here we've been sent a concept for an almost Art Deco style piece of sculpture, 4 meters tall. The finished render will be a chrome gold lion with a large marble plinth, and here during the planning stage we're working out the best method to create each component and running our recommendations by the client. The base we've agreed to widen so that it's got more of a solid foundation and a less top heavy feel, and so a water tank can be installed inside for the added purpose of weighing the sculpture down. You can hold about a thousand litres, which works out to be around a tonne in actual weight. A thousand litres of water that is, not lead, molten lead. And this should provide a nice wide stable base for the sculpture, which is going to be two metres. 75 on top of there. Now, the lion figure itself, being such a complex design, modelled on computer, it's going to be created by a computer as well. It's going to be 3D printed from a plastic material, and coming from a company that love creating something by hand, what's going on I hear you say? Well, sometimes it's just what needs to be done that's best for the project, and trust me, there's plenty of work to go around when it comes to creating this piece. On the other end of the argument, people often ask us why we don't have everything cut via computerised CNC or 3D printed means, but this actually works out to be far more expensive than carving by hand. Considering the machines doing all the physical work, the material, the software, the time, and the machinery itself takes up the bulk of the project cost, and let's face it, it's more fun to create something ourselves anyway, as well as being more affordable for the client. I think the majority of our subscribers would agree as well, that seeing something come to life via a hand-carved process is often more satisfying than a printer spitting out plastic, at least we hope so anyway. Whilst the line is being printed, we're getting started with the base. We've created a polystyrene template of one of the side profiles, and we've created a mould for this to be replicated four times in glass fibre. Using a piece of plastboard to ensure a nice flat surface, we've used a gel coat and fiberglass which is then cleaned up once the polystyrene pattern has been removed. It's good to get the mould as clean and neat as possible at this stage to help save on the same cleaning up on all four panels later. Replicating the four sides from the mould in glass fibre, these now need to be positioned together and joined from the inside. A flat top to the plinth also needs to be created and joined to the rest of the base. We actually need to take a moment for a little congratulations is in order here in the workshop. Clive, Jess's dad, has bopped his way up the ranks and graduated to the rank of earning himself a Sculpture Studios caricature. Arguably one of the highest honours here in the workshop. Well done Clive old chap. All this wood's been laser cut by a company just down the road from us, so one of our neighbours. So we know they're accurate. Very lovely job. Everything's being done from car body filler and worked up to a good finish. And it's also being done handcrafted with tender loving care. Tender loving tender care. Loving. As well as tender loving care, we've saved the client a truck ton of money, haven't we? Yeah. What idea was that, Aidan? What idea? The best idea. The best the idea. Best. Damn right. Why don't you let her go on with it? Oh God, what a character. This is the first time we're getting that plinth on that box. If it don't go on, then I've royally balls this up.
Clive's been working hard on creating the interior of the plinth, cladding the tank and metal frame with wooden panels, and adding metalwork that will allow the lion and plinth to bolt down onto the base. The letters are being given a black base coat, so we can see the finish and see if any more work needs to be done, and when we're happy, a final base coat of black to begin the gold artwork. The lion has taken several weeks to have printed, which has given us time to work on the foundations, but now it's arrived in the studio, it's all hands on deck to get this up to scratch. Even after being printed, the sculpture still needs to be cleaned up numerous times from head to toe in order to get a decent finish. Another reason why 3D printing sometimes costs a lot, as work still needs to be done on it anyway. Regardless though, it does look really good, you've got to admit, and imagine trying to cut all those facets by hand, no thank you. Okay, and here we have Aiden with the lion. Yesterday he's gone over with a 2K black paint. How many layers have you gone over with? Uh, five in total. Five total. And this builds it up nice and high, so that the surface only shows up the real lines that we need to take off and any detail that's been left by the 3D cutting. And what we're doing now, we're going over with little sandy blocks to make sure we keep all the surfaces nice and flat because there's very little here on here that's actually curved. Everything's kind of faceted with all straight edges. And we're getting this as nice as possible to then respray with a final black coat once we're happy with the finish. And then this will be sent off for chroming. It's quite a laborious task when you think of all these flats and facets, but it's uh, something that has to be done and you have to do it really carefully to keep all the sharp corners. So, question of biting off each little bit as we go, instead of thinking of the whole thing as a big project. For the marble plinth, Aidan's going over with a 2K car body paint as a white base coat and the marble effect airbrushed onto the surface. The car body paints we use are strong and durable for outside use on their own, but we'll also be protecting this as well with the 2K gloss lacquer later. Here we are, this is about the um, fourth going over, and I can still see smallest amounts of scratches in the surface. So we're going to go over again and again until we lose these small little areas here. Quite frustrating really, but we're looking up the whole job and it looks lovely overall, but there are small little discrepancies within the surface and the edges as well. So our aim really is to get this uh, absolutely perfect if we can, or as, as perfect as the time allows really. But yeah, small little bits and pieces. Really we've got to lose that if we can. But on the whole, not bad at all, coming along. It's just um, a hard task to keep going over the same job again and again and again until we get there. But you have to do it black and then we spray it silver or a chrome and then put a tint in it. Although up there looks a bit copper, we're actually going for a more of a gold look. But we've got to get it pinch perfect so you end up with a beautiful finish all round like that one. But if we can get it nice in black, is it overall? It should be uh, the best it can be. Hey boys! Back to it. Using different grades of sandpapers, the surface of the line is gradually being improved, and we give it extra passes of black primer to see what the result is. This needs to be flipped over to do the reverse side, remember? And there's no help from Rocky, no help at all, he's just there for moral support, so no change there from the norm. The tail of the lion has been delivered separately, and needs to be cut into sections to wrap around the body, to then rejoin together. We've drilled fixing points for the tail to attach to the legs, so that it's not just floating off the job, as this will be delicate to handle if it's literally only connected where the base of the tail meets the body. Once again, a decision needs to be made on the facets, and how smooth we're to sand this back, or whether to keep all the hundreds of cut shapes and sharp edges. This alone took a good chunk of time as part of the project. Just working out a few of the alterations to make sure the, uh, the fiberglass top box fits. Making some adjustments, just minor ones, but we want to make sure it fits comfortably, so really quite tight. 
With the plinth marble effect finished, and a gloss lacquer applied, the letters are now being prepared to adhere onto the base. Worked up from a black base coat of paint on the front, we go over with a silver layer first, and then a gold tint to achieve the colour. This is a similar process that the chroming company will use on the lion figure, only with more complex materials. They'll apply a chrome silver layer over our black base coat, and then add a gold tint into the top coat layer afterwards. On the front of the plinth, the letter positioning is being marked out, and horizontal beams are placed across the front to ensure that all the letters line up properly. Yo, Mary Poppins, y'all! Mary Poppins, y'all! So what we've done, we've scored up the back of each letter, and we've put tiny pinholes so that the bonding paste is something to hold onto. Likewise, on the front surface of the plinth, where it's had a shiny gloss lacquer, there's not a lot of texture going on there, so we've scored that up as well, so the bonding paste has got something to hold to on both surfaces. Um, and behind the keyed up surface, I've also done tiny little drill holes, so that before this fiberglass is uh, secured to the water tank, we can drill through the back and we can secure these with screws as well. Just in case people want to come up and touch them, it's not just a bit of bonding paste that's holding it to the job. They're the belt and braces so that they're really stuck onto the job properly. So now, once everything's lined up, make sure nothing's going at a wonky pitch. Um, tomorrow is now going to be secured onto the job, and then we'll show you the drilling process of screwing through the back to secure the letters on more. So you join me in the belly of the plinth. Here, I'm just going to use these little shouldered screws so that it pinches each of the letters nice and tight to the job. Make sure they're nice and tight. Just want to go through every letter, and there's about four on each letter. So they should be nice and secure to the job. And that's it. So these letters, Aiden, you happy with the end result? Uh, yeah, I think so. Do you want to sound a little bit more sure about that? Oh, right, you know okay. what I mean? So these letters, Aidan, you happy with the finish, all in all? All things considered, I think we're very happy here in the studio. Um, we had lots of problems trying to get a different company to actually make this for us. We was going to get them laser cut, CNC, uh, plastic 3D injection, printed, everything. 3D printed, yeah. And although they could cut the peripheral of the, each letter, the, uh, the actual font, they couldn't deal with the, um, the aspect of the pick on, like, on the front. Everything seemed to be a little bit different. Everything, things like this part on the M and that cutting on the R, everything was ever so slightly different to the file we were sent, so the only solution was to do it ourselves, really, and it, it saved yeah. a lot of time and it saved a lot of cost for the client. Well, also, um, we could tackle it here in the studio and we could keep an eye on it like, as it progressed. And we also did the gold and the painting as well and fixed them on, so very, very happy all round. We're installing a wooden board to the underside of the plinth fiberglass top so the lion has a strong surface to sit on top of and bolt through to the water tank.
The line itself is finally ready to be sent off for chroming, so we're washing this baby down and we'll see it in a few days. Or in this case, the next clip, all fully chromed and golded. Golded, is that a word? Golded? Golded? Go goldified? Gold gil gilded, gilded and golden, that'll do. By the time it came to the chroming process, this was always going to look great, but we're glad we worked it all the way up to the finish we eventually did, as it really allows the chrome to do its job properly. It was important to create a finish that would look fantastic from a distance, but as well as up close, as we didn't yet know where the sculpture was going to be positioned, and the public could be practically right against it. At the moment, we still need to finish adding the wording on the front, but the clients requested for a few additional extras to the plinth their AKQA logo to be positioned underneath the existing wording, and a brass plaque on either side of the base that they're going to have milled and sent down to us. We need to get on and have these installed before the deadline date, but for the moment, let's take a look at how the lion looks on the base. This is the first time we've had the gold lion up in the air in the studio, so it's great to see all the different elements come together and see how it turns out. Spell future wrong. <laughs> <laughs> At this point, our client Liz Smith, whom we've liaised with for the majority of our other AKQA projects, had only seen a couple of pictures of the sculpture and hadn't seen any of the components together. She certainly hadn't seen anything painted or chromed, so this is a great reveal when she's invited down to the studio to take a look at the finished item. As well as Aidan walking her through the construction in the workshop, we're putting together an instructional video for her team that will be installing the sculpture on site. This ensures the sculpture is handled properly, as other people might not know the strengths and weaknesses of the build, as well as handled safely so nobody gets hurt. This is quite a heavy item, and needs to be managed between a few people, so it's important every precaution is taken so assembly goes smoothly. Welcome to Sculpture Studios. This is the assembly instructions for the future Lion Gold statue. Once all of the elements have been moved to site, preferably by forklift on their bases, the water tank needs to be positioned first. Make sure the water filling points are at the back of the sculpture for the direction you want it to face, and lift the marble section over the tank. Once again, ensure you've matched the filling points on the water tank with the trap door sections on the marble plinth. When this has been lowered down, some adjusting needs to be done to ensure that all the holes on both the bases match up. This can be tested by dropping a few loose bolts through the holes, but make sure these loose bolts are removed afterwards to allow the lion to be positioned on top. The lion itself should only be handled by the body of the figure. Areas like the tail wraparound, the arms and the hands and the head should not be held when performing any sort of movement with the sculpture. Lifting by elements of the body and the torso, and under the armpits is acceptable. Make sure the lion doesn't bump or scuff against the marble plinth, and place rubber or thick soft material on top to ensure you don't dent or scratch the top surface. Maneuver the sculpture so the bolts sit through the designated holes, once again ensuring the lion is facing the correct direction towards the lettering on the front of the plinth. Please mind your fingers, and do not place your hands under the sculpture whatsoever, even as an attempt to align the bolts with the holes, as this can be done without needing to reach underneath. 
Make sure you stand toward the edge of the marble plinth on top to help ensure the integrity of the base. Through the filling trapdoor on the back of the marble plinth, attach the nuts onto the bottom of each bolt on the inside of the job and use the ratchet wrench to tighten securely. The trapdoor can be removed and replaced via a screwdriver with external screws. The water tank can be filled anywhere up to a tonne and the water can be removed via the bottom trapdoor and the tap at the bottom of the base. So do you want to talk about this plate, Aidan? Uh, well, yeah. Lovely on the back. Actually, a real sort of brass look, which is fairly close to that, we'd say. Yeah. On the front, where it's been sort of shot blast or sanded, um, it just looks like cream, and it can then I've collect the dirt. Looks like plastic. Looks like, yeah. But that's how it's going to look. It's, shall I put it on the side? Come around the side. Yeah. Turn it round. Yeah, put that on. Hey. You put it on that way. It's a shame it don't go on that way. It's a much more in keeping colour. Right, here we have Aiden with the new plaques all sprayed up. Well, that looks a lot closer, doesn't it? Hey. That looks a lot closer. That's better. Now they're all in the same light. Yeah, it's a lot nicer. Yeah, pop it around the side. Yeah, yeah lovely. Let's see if Liz is happy with it. Yeah, are you happy with that, Liz? So, after a few adjustments to make sure the finish is the best it can be, including a cheeky respray to get the best colour match, this is now ready for delivery. Going all the way down to Cannes in the south of France, these are wrapped snug as a bug and delivered by road. Set up on site, we've managed to grab a few finished shots from the internet and it looks glorious out in the sunlight. We'd like to thank Liz Smith from AKQA for coming to us once again with yet another fantastic concept. We look forward to any future projects, perhaps more lion related pieces yet to come. Please feel free to leave any comments below as they're always appreciated and hit the subscribe button for our latest videos. You can like Sculpture Studios on Facebook and follow at Aidan Hines on Twitter. And for more of our work, visit sculpturestudios.co.uk. Thank you very much for watching.